John here from Central Florida Sights and Sounds. Of course, we're back here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Now, a year and a half ago, we were here right after this place opened up from COVID-19 since it was closed for a couple of months. But a year and a half later, we're gonna see what has changed because obviously back then, a lot of the pre-shows weren't, uh, weren't working uh, or operating and a lot of those COVID-19s were very strict. But with a lot of the vaccines that have come out, since then, we're going to come back and see uh, what has changed. There's some also some new additions that we that were not here the last time that we were here. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll join us. And of course, I am wearing my lovely uh, Spatial Endeavor shirt from the California Science Center. I know of obviously here they have Atlantis, but I wanted to kind of represent my shuttle. Um, but uh, hopefully this will be exciting and uh, we get to take you along. Right, so we are inside the park now. Now some things uh, have changed, such as where the last time we were here about a year and a half ago, you had to wear a mask no matter if it was indoors or outdoors. Now, if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear your mask outdoors, but uh, everyone still has to wear their mask indoors, no matter if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. Now, a couple of the additions that actually have been added in the year and a half since, uh, I don't know if you can make out the lovely blue Delta rocket here in the back. Uh, that has actually been added, as well as this humongous building, which uh, was just a grassy area the last time that we were here, and that is going to be for the deep exploration. And this 50,000 square foot multi-level attraction uh, will inspire guests through one-of-a-kind experiences and you're going to be basically face to face with several pretty big uh, artifacts. One of them I almost got to see, but uh, it got scrubbed the first time, which is the EFT-1, which is the Orion uh, spacecraft that was flown back in 2014. It was Remember, it was December of 2014 and we... Is it got this, scrubbed. Is this going to be like, we're going to see stuff that's going to go to Mars and stuff? Or like deeper than Mars? I would say things that, a little, I guess a little bit of both, because this is kind of going to explore that. Is this Orion is, going to Mars? No, Orion's going to the moon. Orion's, and that's Artemis. Yes. Which the original space program should have been called, but whatever, I'm yeah. not bitter. So uh, the other things that's going to be having is a full-scale engineering model of Boeing's CT, uh, CST-100 Starliner. Uh, the SpaceX Falcon 9 first stage booster, which launched the Theacom 8 satellite in 2016 uh, before being converted into a side booster for the first Falcon Heavy launch with Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster in 2018, which is still flying around in space. Uh, you're also going to have a full-scale replica of the Sierra Space Dream uh, Chaser cargo rocket plane, which is like a smaller version of the space shuttle, or at least looks like it. Uh, scale model of NASA's Space Launch System Heavy Lift Rocket. And of course, you're going to see models of uh, ULA's or United Launch Alliance's Atlas V and Delta IV Heavy Rocket. So it's going to be pretty cool. Hopefully, uh, we'll be coming back again uh, in March once this opens up and we'll get to check out this exhibit. This is this definitely something I'm really excited about. How do you, how do you feel about that? I think it's gonna be interesting because like we don't get to see, I mean like a lot of, a lot of the stuff here is history. Like the Heroes and Legends building over there like shows you like the history of the astronauts and like all that. And obviously all of these rockets are older. But like, you know, a lot of this place is about the history of the space program, not the future, which is important. So of course, the last time that we were here, you obviously had to wear masks as I stated before, but we didn't have any, <laughs> we didn't really have any kind of like space related masks, but thanks to our good friend Dana, we do. Look at that, look at that beautiful mask right there. All spacey. So mine, I wanted to have a little bit more celebration of the space shuttle, so uh, she was able to put together a beautiful mask uh, for us. I have a shuttle. Oh, 
All right, never mind. You I'll, also I'll do have a shuttle as well. And I have a moon man. And you have a moon a space walker. Moon man. That's not moon man. <laughs> That's not moon man. Um, I beg to differ because the MTV Movie Awards call him a moon man. Yes, because it was actually <laughs> taken from on the moon with the flag. Moon man. <laughs> so, of course, the rocket that is right here is a Delta II rocket. Uh, they added they added it uh, earlier this year, and this sucker has been a workhorse for ULA and for the Air Force for quite some time. But this is one of the newest additions to the Rocket Garden, and it's uh, it's nice to see that. Uh, the also other cool thing is this particular rocket that's laying down here. They completely refurbed the heck out of it. This was during uh, the Apollo era and uh, this was in some major TLC or needed some TLC so this is completely been repainted, refurbished and it looks brand spanking new again. Because this thing here sits outdoors all day and being it close to the uh, to the ocean with the salt water it does take a heavy toll. one of the things that wasn't open after COVID immediately were the bus tours and that's usually a pretty big draw here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex but uh, now they have restarted it and the way you actually do this now is you actually reserve a QR code your time to go on the bus tour via as Anne Marie had said a QR code which they usually have scattered throughout the park but it's also at the main entrance before you even get in. Uh, so you kind of scan it and you select the time that you want to go on and what bus that you want to go on. And then uh, you fill out some information, your name, uh, email how address, people? how many people in your party. And then it will give you a barcode, which I would highly recommend screenshotting on your phone. And then that's how you'll go. And they want you to typically uh, be there 15 minutes before your board time. So we chose 12 o'clock because one, the Apollo Saturn 5 Center kind of closes early, so we wanted to knock that out and uh, get it out of the way so that way we're not completely rushing to do it later. So, uh, Amory, you ready to go on that bus tour? Yeah, I got a space hat. And yeah, as you can see, she got the Artemis space hat, which is the, the new program to bring us back to the moon once again. And she's a little sour because the Apollo is the god of he was war. the sun god the sun god they're twins so she was the god of goddess of the moon he was the god of the sun and should have been named after her to begin with because well, you know the moon we're not going to the sun because we would die true so anyway uh <laughs> getting ready to go to the Saturn v follow Saturn five center so let's go yeah nasa Alright, so they've already checked our tickets, so we are now heading on in. Uh, obviously, when you're in queues, they do want your mask on, uh, especially since you're going to be on a bus. But uh, yeah, this is it's, it's exciting, and it's nice that uh, they are restarting this again.
our place and watched the stars since the dawn of humankind. We've looked at the stars with wonder and amazement. Their glow guiding our travel for centuries. The more we learn about our universe, the more questions we have. Today, we'll explore where NASA and its partners are taking us in the future. But before we begin this journey, just like every NASA mission, our number one goal is to return home safely. So always stay seated while the bus is in motion. Please keep conversation to a minimum so others may hear and enjoy the tour. No photography is permitted at the security gates, but there will be plenty of photo opportunities during the tour. and I'm excited to go behind the gates at Kennedy Space Center and experience the incredible achievements of NASA. I'm standing next to a Creel Mercury Redstone rocket, the same rocket that began NASA's journey of human space exploration. Our trip today will begin at the same Mercury Redstone and take us from the Apollo and space shuttle programs into current day activities at this multi-user spaceport into the exciting future of NASA. The work that's being done right this moment at Kennedy Space Center is bringing us closer to that next monumental achievement in space exploration. To welcome you, here's Space Shuttle Astronaut and Center Director of Kennedy Space Center, Bob Cabana. Hi, I'm Bob Cabana. Welcome to NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center, where NASA astronauts have ventured forth on flights of exploration since the 1960s, and where future space exploration will take us to the moon, Mars, and beyond. In all our history, there's been one common theme woven throughout our DNA. It's our insatiable desire to explore beyond our home planet and our never-ending quest to expand our knowledge of the universe. As you venture behind the gates, you'll find a community of the most talented, dedicated, motivated workforce anywhere in the world who believe in the unlimited potential of space exploration. This is an active spaceport where new things are happening every day. You never know what you might see. So enjoy your tour. One there in the middle, it says home of the X-37B. The X-37B is a super top secret space plane built by Boeing for the Air Force. So super top secret they painted the name on the back door and if you Google it, it'll tell you everything you need to know about it. There's three cube-shaped buildings, originally were the orbiter processing facilities, where the orbiters would go, get reconfigured for one flight, gotten ready for the next. Then they were taken inside the VAB, stacked on a mobile launch platform with two solid rocket boosters and an orange external tank. Once that was completed, it became a shuttle. Then it was taken out to launch bed. Over here to the left is a guy, an alligator, floating right along that column up there. Oh, there's an alligator right there. There's an alligator. Yeah. Look out there. There might be more on there. Now that building with the uh, capsule pictures coming into view again over here to the right. We missed it early. We got another chance to take a picture. Now this one level white building here with all the gray doors on it, as we pass this building, look behind it, you get to see the color transporters. Each one of those vehicles weighs six million pounds. Now there's body of water over here to the right. Check it out for alligators, manatees, dolphins, or any other type of wildlife. On the top of that pole right there to the right, there's a hawk. Guarantee you will see water. Quarter number two will be used for the SLS program to take the launch vehicle back and forth to the pad. We will begin by going underneath the mobile launcher. We'll pick it up. We'll take it over to the VAB. They'll then assemble the launch vehicle on top of the mobile launcher. And then we'll come back to the VAB. We'll slide underneath it again. We'll pick it up. We'll take it out to the pad. The trip of about 4.2 miles will take us about seven hours to get there. But during our trip to the launch pad, we'll roll over a specially prepared crawler weight that consists of anywhere from 8 to 12 inches of special rock. Below that is limestone that's about four feet thick and compressed to hold the weight of the crawler and the launcher. And then below that is some 
39 A's were all 12 men that walked on the moon. That's where they left from. 84 shuttle launches left the path 39A. And right now SpaceX operates 39A. They launched their Falcon 9, their Falcon Heavy, and their commercial crew. It's takes astronauts to the space station. So 39A is a very active and very historic launch pad. As we make the turn here, look up and over across the top of the bleachers out there in the distance, you'll see tall, three tall towers and a water tower. That is launch pad 39B. 39B is where the new SLS Space Launch System rocket will be launching from in 2024, taking astronauts back to the moon and on to Mars. 2024, that's not that far away. Now looking straight ahead, we have the Spence area here. This is the Moon Tree Gun. So of course, we are here outside the Apollo Sound Five Center. Um, they still have the circles down here on the ground that uh, remind you, if I could tilt my thing down, uh, to stay still six feet apart. So everyone's kind of standing on their own circle right here. My ankle is as big as Neil Armstrong. Yes. <laughs> so I always I always love the outside of this because they really set the mood because you're um, basically we're back in 1968 and they play a lot of like early or uh, late 60s music to kind of put you back in that time frame. So uh, of course I know you're you're really into that, but then on the uh, little scrolling, uh, come on there, on the top here they kind of give you a little history facts of stuff that happened in 1968. So yeah. We stood on the eve of the longest, most dangerous journey that any man had ever undertaken. And it would be taken by Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Andrews, the crew of Apollo 8. Through those doors, you'll find the firing room, the launch control, just as it was on December 21st, 1968. Please gather all of your belongings, take small children by the hand, and proceed through the open doors to firing room number one. All strollers, wheelchair guests, and hearing impaired guests, please use the door to your far left. It's still the most powerful, the most complex machine ever built. 
And I guess it's the only one that can take you to another planet. I actually got to fly one on a second flight from home called uh, Apollo 13. But uh, that's another story. Please watch your step as you exit the firing room. Continue your journey at the Lunar Theater, located near the nose end of the Saturn V rocket. Enjoy your visit to the Apollo 7 V Center. Alright, so we enjoyed those first two lovely setup uh, pre-shows about the Apollo 8 uh, launch back in 1968. And then we got to kind of experience what that launch was like back then in the uh, launch control center. Uh, Emery, you, uh, you said you had some thoughts. Well, like, <laughs> I guess it's kind of amazing to think that this was done in the late 60s when computers were primitive at best, and a lot of the calculations and stuff was done by longhand math. Like, it wasn't like, you know, now we just put stuff in a program and it figures it out, you know? <laughs> might, might I say, very talented women actually did a lot of the uh, mathematical African calculations. Women. And African-American women as well. <laughs> so. And she finally got recognized in uh, Houston, right? Didn't they name something after Katherine Johnson in Houston? I think so. Um, we will we will add a nice little thing. Here. I think they like because she like she just like when she turned like a hundred. I think they. I think so. They named something after her, which I mean was. Long I think overdue. this was. I think this was before that she turned a hundred, but they recognized the work that her and her colleagues did to get the Apollo astronauts to the moon, and so I I believe some of. One of the uh, one of the NASA buildings is actually named uh, in her. If you haven't honor. if you haven't watched Hidden Figures, you should. It's a great movie. So yeah, it looks like they've added some stuff over here, um, right in front of us. Uh, normally, what was here was one of Alan Shepard's uh, Corvettes, uh, one of the cars uh, that he owned, which is actually over here. But uh, they have now since added some more. I guess exhibits down here and they've moved some stuff around so yeah we're gonna take a take a quick old look
no se casan en todavía. Hay un dólar aquí. So we are here outside the Apollo Saturn V Center and here we are at the Moon Tree Garden. Now actually I have never had the chance to check out this garden but uh, Anne-Marie and I are going to be walking this pathway which is in the shape of a figure eight which is the pathway that Apollo astronauts took from the Earth to the Moon. Now recently, I believe up maybe a year or two ago, they added this beautiful statue, which you are about to see, uh, commemorating the three Apollo 11 astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. And it's really beautiful. So I'm gonna turn that camera around. Wow. Really beautiful statue. So you have Michael Collins on the left, Neil Armstrong in the middle, and Buzz Aldrin on the right. And it's not that often you actually get to see um, colored bronze sculptures. True. It's usually just either like just, just one, the bronze. Just the bronze. It looks nice though. It looks very nice. Wow. What do you think? How much, how much do you think he thought about what he was going to say? when he landed. Like how long do you think he thought about what he was going to say? Cuz obviously it was, it, he knew it was going to be historic. Like obviously it wasn't the first thing that came to his head. Yeah. Like he probably um, thought about it for like weeks. <laughs> it's I don't I I'm not 100% sure if it's something that he he personally thought about for a long period or if it's just something that kind of came up to him at the spur of the moment. Um because obviously when you're on a mission, you're, you know, the mission comes first. But I mean, he knew, like, he knew he was going to be the first one, like, yeah. Like, as soon as they were assigned that, they knew they were going to be it. Like, I wonder if he, like, started thinking about it then, because I know I would. I would have freaked out, like, not knowing, because you know it's going to go down in history. And, like, <laughs> what if you said something dumb? <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, on that note, uh, so... Uh, uh, things I think about. The, the things that Amaryse thinks about. So, around this garden, you'll see plaques for each of the Apollo missions. And these lovely, lovely trees are some of the descendants of the original trees that Stuart Rosa from Apollo 14 took to the moon, came back, and then they were planted. Actually, there's uh, several moon trees around the country if you... If you look up where they are, um, some of them are still living. And these were planted, especially for America's bicentennial, 
1976. But it's nice to know that these trees still carry on that legacy from Apollo 14. Was he the one that you said was a geologist? That was Harrison Smith. Uh oh. Every day, every mission, we advance this goal. We are NASA. And after 60 years, we're just getting started. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look over here. There's a. Uh, there's a big alligator laying down there by that concrete right there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, it's only one of 6,000 though. <laughs> Just to give you a little information here about the vehicle assembly building as we go by. Uh, All right, so was it kind of nice to uh, be back on the bus tour to the Apollo Siren 5 Center again? Yeah. And uh, it, it's still as many times as I've been to the Saturn V Center, it's always refreshing to go back uh, time and time again. But it's nice to see that uh, Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex is back to doing the bus tours. But here we are outside of the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit, which is uh, behind us. Now the last time we were here, this no. was not closed. It this was, was open, but this it, was open. No pre -show. There were no pre-shows, and so the reveal, spoiler alert, uh, the reveal of the shuttle at the end was just open. So we're going to head inside and see if they're back to doing the pre-show again. So let's head on in, so Anne-Marie. Is this oh. full-size or is this scale? This is a full-size stack. Very impressive. But yeah, so let's head on in and see if uh, the pre-show has restarted. It'd be nice to know if they did. So the last time we were here, these these two windows here are windows that look over into the gift shop. They have completely covered up the windows. So I am not sure if the gift shop is open or if it's closed, but we will find out. Thank you. 
May I have your attention, please? Should you need to leave this presentation for any reason, we ask that you exit using the doors located at the front of the theater. And as a reminder, we ask that you refrain from the use of cell phones, video recorders, or external lighting. Thank you for coming today, and we hope you'll enjoy the presentation.
well. Oh my gosh, I was starting to ready to cry again. Woo! Um, I will say, um, after not having that, um, not having that pre-show last year and, and coming to see it again, oh my god. I mean, it's just, it's very emotional, and I think it's kind of, it's probably like how, um, like our parents feel about the Apollo stuff, because they, that was their thing. Yeah. Like, the shuttle was during our lifetime. Yeah. So, like, this is what we grew up with. So, like, seeing her like this up close when all you ever saw it was on television, mm. it's very powerful. Um, I mean, we, we've we've stated this before, the, th the, the previous times that we've been here. Um, but, I th like, I, I will definitely strongly agree with, with what you said, but it's also the, the presentation, well, yeah. um, the music, the, the imagery. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that the company that did this that pre that pre-show were the same people that did uh, the Magic Memories and you over at the Magic Kingdom. So the projection, the mapping. projection mapping and everything like that, um, they did a fantastic job. But uh, it's it's always it's always emotional. The reveal is always the reveals is 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 always amazing. Yeah, and the, the, when like. It's like last year, like last year when we came and he just kind of walked in and he just saw it. It was like, I mean, it's so powerful to see because I mean, this is an amazing thing that you get to actually be almost within touching distance to. Yeah. But like not having that, like having all that emotion in the story and like the storytelling of the pre-show and then the reveal is just, it's great. Like, yeah. I hope like, I mean, I know like the other one's not gonna have probably anything as I don't know like are you talking about uh, Endeavor yeah I know Discovery doesn't it's really pretty much it's just there you walk into the the uh, Udvar Hazi like, Center and there it is and I feel like Endeavors will kind of probably be that way too yeah because it's going to be in the upright position it's not going to be like anywhere where you're going to be able to pick up a screen and like you yeah know, like, like currently <laughs> as, as we are recording is she still in the uh the ocean uh, space pavilion the way yeah. we saw her back in 2015 so she's still in that kind of like temporary tent until yeah. they can get funding to uh to build the build her in the the, the launch configuration yeah. but um it's nice to see that while yes you still have to well wear masks indoors we get to enjoy the the pre-shows again because i feel uh especially for the space shell lance exhibit that it's important. I, it's important, but it like it really kind of drives that that feeling home. The emotion and the emotion. Uh, I was like, I was literally ready to like. Yeah, I was ball. I was like, oh. But you always do. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, enjoy some views of Spatial Atlantis. So John, what am, what am I looking at here? Well, this seems to be a new addition downstairs here at the Atlantis exhibit. This is the Space Tunnel Truss Assembly. And this happens to be, I guess, the uh, one of the hatch doors. So like each of these little levers has to like lock Work. or unlock? Yeah, the, this whole thing works together. That's why they're all connected. You know what this reminds me of? What's that? The entrance to the Chamber of Secrets. Really? Yeah. Because each little snake had to unlock.
and here is the other back plate so one of them is for the front one of them is for the back so this would attach from the inside to the yeah outside so they could go into the payload bay to close doors correct yeah you don't have one one solid door you have two doors that basically connect each other like a uh in a hotel uh like connecting rooms, rooms adjoining rooms you have two doors same same principle here so they have to like pressurize one so that they can go out, outside and not die yes yeah, so if you <laughs> if you notice on one of the doors it actually has the ps uh psid um but that will tell you the uh the pressures per square inch um and it has to hit a certain number where it has to be zero so like when they go in and out of this they're not wearing the big suit they're just wearing like normal clothes or their normal flight suit or whatever yes because it, that's pressurized so they don't need to wear the big suit correct so yeah so it looks like my reservations when we were first coming in were correct. Um, as you can see, the uh, gift shop is indeed closed. Still, there is someone in there, but I, <laughs> but I don't think they're gonna let us in. Um, but we still have that main gift shop in the main visitor complex that's open, but this one particular- And the Apollo one was open too. And the Apollo one was open. Um, but <laughs> the Atlantis one is still closed for the time being. Hopefully that will change up Possibly next year. Well, but they still have, like, stuff in there. Yeah, there's so. still stuff in there, so maybe it's not it's just, going anywhere. Maybe it's just closed early or something. Maybe. Um, well, the windows were completely blocked uh, yeah, from the outside. Maybe they're doing some sort of refurbishment in there. They're getting ready to reopen. Could Who could knows? be so. But uh, yeah, if you're visiting the the Kennedy Space Center visitor complex in Atlantis, uh, note that the gift shop here is still closed so if you want to pick up any items you might want to do that at the main gift shop so the other cool thing that is now open uh that wasn't a year and a half ago are the slides now the slides represent the angle of descent from the space shuttle from orbit to deorbit all right so that has been our time here at the kennedy space center visitor complex obviously a lot of things have changed in that year and a half um, I meant to mention when we first started, if you want to watch what this park looked like right after COVID, uh, after, um, like after reopened, uh, I'll put up in the right hand side or right, or one, one of these corners here. Um, you can watch a video of that. I'll put that in the, uh, in the link as well. But, uh, but Amory, what, what did you think now? Year and a half coming back here. Well, with a lot of things kind of reopening. I mean, that, um, almost everything is reopened. The only thing that we didn't see that was reopened was the gift shop at Atlantis. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously people have come back. Um, they're doing the IMAX Yeah, they're doing uh, the IMAX again. thing. Of like, basically, the last time we were here, none of the indoor exhibits were open. It was all outdoor stuff, except for Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Like, the IMAX wasn't open, and like, some of the stuff over here, Saturn the, 5 wasn't open. They weren't doing the bus tours. So like, you know, it was, I mean, there was a reason the ticket was half price. <laughs> like, um, but you know, it definitely feels normal. Again, you know, as, as normal as it's gonna be mm -hmm. for a while. So yeah, overall, I feel a little bit more comfortable, obviously with uh, Amory and I having both of our vaccine shots and our booster shot and we even did the extra and got our flu shots as well um so i definitely feel more comfortable being around, being around. <laughs> well <laughs> maybe not all of them not all of them <laughs> but you get what we're saying um but i mean regardless of just wearing the mask indoors I mean, it's kind of like everywhere else where we go at this point. Yeah. Where we have to wear it's, it inside. It, it's you know? kind of similar to Disney's policy. Yeah. Uh, Universal is basically like a free for all at this point. Um, <laughs> SeaWorld and Legoland are work. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I think this is definitely a better experience yeah. this time than it was last year. 
So, uh, don't forget, you can uh, subscribe, hit that like button, don't forget, uh, smash. Me, smash that subscribe button, and, uh, like. and, and ring that bell for notifications. <laughs> notifications. We're bad at this. <laughs> Uh, As John said in the original Kennedy Space Center video, we're not vloggers, so this is we're not good at this. <laughs> like it's nice to do these like occasionally, but I am I I'm I'm not gonna be like one of those big vloggers that does this like not daily or weekly or anything. It's just eh, whenever it warrants it. That's that's when I'll do it. So uh, with that, say goodbye, Anne Marie. What I'm gonna say is I'm gonna eat my astronaut ice cream. Anne-Marie, that is not astronaut ice cream. It is. It says it right here. <laughs> it says space food. Yeah. But it's not even space food. It's they have my, real food up there. It's my astronaut ice cream. Why would NASA lie to me? <laughs> anyway, uh, until next time, so long.